We will do a sense check in a minute because that's always something that I recommend when you're doing questions like this. You do all this working, you crunch all these numbers and then you end up with a, a nice neat number at the end. However, the reason I'm just pausing on my sense check is because part A very naturally leans into part B and that's actually gonna help us do the sense check. So part B says, what is the percentage of the shaded part in relation to the whole area of the dartboard? And that whole area of the dartboard, which we're gonna obviously need to calculate, that's something which I think will help us with our sense check. So um, the percentage of the shaded part in relation to the whole area is just the shaded part divided by the whole area. So let's work out the area of the dartboard. Uh, area of whole dartboard. And this is a nice easy formula, of course, all the way back from your seven times. This is pi r squared. And of course, we're remembering it's the correct radius, which is the big one, the 23 square centimeters. So this is pi times 23 squared. So I'm gonna reach for my calculator again, pi times 23 squared. So I'm getting uh, 1,661.9024. Nine zero two five dot dot dot, and uh, instead of rounding at this point, I mean I could round. The numbers are so sufficiently you know different from each other that it's not going to introduce much of a problem. But uh, your calculator can do this as well. It's not just Desmos. If you can use exact values, then why not use exact values? So this guy over here, um, I'm going to call it. Uh, let's see, A. Let's just name that guy A, and I'm going to call this guy down here B. If you didn't know that you could just assign values to things in Desmos, then here you go. You just call them by different letters. Um, and then I'll say A, which is the shaded part. And I'm gonna divide by B. Now that gives us a very small number. Um, I'm trying to work out a percentage and I've done this using the exact figures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by 100 and I get this is the percentage. Not um, That's not you know multiply by 100 again. I can say percentage equals and I would, because all of this calculation that I've just done is kind of hidden from my working because it's all in the calculator. So I would actually put in these numbers that I used to calculate it. I'll go 4.980995 dot dot dot. I'm gonna divide by the total area that I just worked out, 1,661.9025 dot dot dot. And what I'm getting is um, 0.2997 dot 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 percent. And uh, they're asking for uh, the percentage to one decimal place. So therefore, this is going to round to 0.3% to one decimal place. So I promised that we would use this calculation here to help us do our sense check. And it does, though this is where I'm going to refer back to the fact that our diagram it's like trying to be helpful and it is, but it's also unhelpful in a real way. When I looked at this number, 0.3%, I thought, hold on, this doesn't look right because if you have a look at our original diagram, um, that shaded section there looks a whole lot bigger than 0.3%. Like 0.3% is very, very small. But that's why I want to remind you that in fact, if you have a think about this, right? Um, this section here, this height, uh, is less than a centimeter when the whole thing has a radius of 23 centimeters. So what you've got up there, um, I mean, if you drew lines in here to represent, you know, 1 23rd of um, this sector, you would barely get like a sliver at the top if it was seven millimeters tall. And so you probably wouldn't be able to see it, doesn't make it a very useful diagram. But if you think about this more accurately, if I get rid of all of these guys now, when you have a think about just a line that's a sliver like that, actually 0.3% sounds like a much more reasonable answer after all. And I've gone ahead, I've, I've double checked and crunched my numbers, so I'm pretty confident that that, that is indeed the percentage. Okay. So we've done A, which is the area of the shaded part. We just finished uh, B, which is the, whoopsie daisy. Um, let's put that back where it was before. That's better. Um, the percentage of the shaded part in relation to the whole area of the dartboard. And lastly, lastly, the perimeter of the shaded area. So I'm gonna come back to my original diagram over here. It's getting a bit busy, but I think it's not, not too busy. I can still use it. Um, how do I work out the area, sorry, the perimeter of this shaded area? Well, there's four components to it, or three as you'll see in a second. You've got the length over here like so. That is unintentionally dark. Let's choose a brighter one. There we go. You have this length 
over here. Now, what is that length? It's not immediately obvious because of the way that the diagram has been drawn and the phrasing of the question, but that distance right there is actually the same as this distance here because that 0.7 centimeters, that um, seven millimeters is it's going to be facing all the way around in the same direction. So if you like, I could say, well, if, if this is seven, then so is this, and so is this. They're all going to be seven millimeters. So therefore, um, this, I'm gonna go back to centimeters in a second because that's the main unit I've been using all the way through this question. That's 0 0.7 centimeters. But by that logic, you've also got the same 0 0.7 hanging out over here. So those two sections are really just one, you can double them up. So those are the easy parts. And then you've got uh, these other two in here. What color am I going to choose? I don't think I've used blue yet. So I've got this arc in here over the top, sorry, over the, the bottom rather. So I've got to work out the length of that. And then I also have to have, okay, I'm rapidly running out of colors. Uh, I used green somewhere, but I'll use it again. I've got this guy up here. This is another arc that is, as you can see from the diagram even, it's gonna be ever so slightly longer than the blue arc down below. So how do we work out each of these? Well, let's just take it one step at a time. Um, I've got AC and BD down, so I won't worry about them for now. Let's worry about arc AB and arc CD. So let's, uh, am I gonna have space in my working? I'll be a bit cheeky and um, I will put it over here on the left-hand side. Okay, so part C. Uh, what do we say? So we got arc A, B. Now, um, the length of an arc is another one of these radian measure formulas. Uh, it it is, isn't as complicated as half R squared theta. In fact, this is one of the simplest formulas um, that you can learn. It's R times theta, that's it. Radius of the circle multiplied by the angle subtended at the center. And I know both of these things for both of the arcs. This is the bigger arc first, so it's going to be a radius of 23. And I already worked out that the, um, the angle subtended so right in the first part, it's gonna be this pi on 10 that we have over here. So multiplied by pi on 10, and in fact, that's kind of it, 23 pi on 10. I'm not even gonna write that because um, you don't gain very much from it. And I'm gonna write it again later when I put all these together. So that's arc AB. Arc uh, CD is gonna be, instead of a radius of 23, it's gonna be 22.3. And then we multiply by that same angle, pi on 10. So there's the two arcs, the blue and the green ones up on the top and the bottom. And then I've got that 0.7, which happens twice. So you might notice as well, unlike in parts A and B, which have asked for approximation, part C doesn't say anything about approximation. So we can just leave this answer exact. I don't even need to do any um, evaluation beyond that. So I'm gonna say um, total perimeter equals, let's do each of the pieces. Um, it's gonna be that 0 0.7, it happens twice for each of the, the left and the right edge. Um, then you're going to get the 23 pi on 10, and then you're gonna get the 22.3 pi on 10. So uh, let's just tidy it up ever so slightly. Um, this is of course gonna give us 1.4. Uh, I've already got them on the same denominator, so divided by 10, both of them, so that gives me 23 plus 22.3 is 45.3. Um, and there is a small part of me that grates against having a decimal on top of a fraction, so therefore I'm gonna write this as uh, 1.4 plus, uh, what do we got here? 453 pi all over 10. Um, and if you wanted to put, sorry, all over 100, I should say, if you want to put this all together, then I guess that would be 140 plus 453 pi, all divided by 100, and our unit was in centimeters. Um, of course, if you want, you can do a quick sense check on that as well by putting it into a calculator, seeing if it is reasonable. I might as well, since I've just mentioned that I, we could do it, I might as well do it. So when we have a look here, uh, what do we got here? So 140. Uh, let's do the fraction first. 140 plus, not minus, plus 
if I could type with my stubby fingers, 453 pi, that's the numerator. The denominator is 100, 15.6 centimeters. Does that sound reasonable at all? Well, hopefully it is making sense because remember this diagram, their diagram and my diagram, not to scale. If those two things are 0.7, but that's actually very, very thin compared to the actual height of this thing. Um, then those two arcs do make sense to be around like mm, six centimeters each um, because that, that scale seems reasonable to me. So I'm happy with that answer of 15.6. So I'm going to leave that as my exact solution.